Do you know about celiac disease? Never heard of it? The majority of these people didn't. But would you be surprised if we tell you that this is one of the most common conditions in the world and that it can affect up to 1% of the population? There are big differences among countries in Europe in diagnosing celiac disease. Uh, in many countries, they are still detecting only typical cases, cases of patients that actually develop diarrhea and fail to thrive after they start eating gluten. But we know today that there are typical and atypical cases of celiac disease and atypical cases are much more common. Now we can think of celiac disease as of an iceberg. We know that iceberg has a tip which is rather small in comparison to the submerged part but majority of patients are actually hidden below the surface and we really need to take care of these patients. We need to find these patients because their quality of life is very low and they represent a very huge burden to medical systems and of course they need to be found as quickly as possible in order to avoid serious complications. There is a huge difference also among European countries. If Finland, with 5 million, already has 28,000 diagnosed, in certain Eastern European countries the celiac condition is almost unknown, for instance in Bulgaria. There is a wide difference among number of diagnosed patients among countries in Europe and we don't know exactly why is this a fact, but maybe this is caused by different availability of tests. We rely mostly on serological tests today and these are differently available in different countries, but they are really very, very reliable tests and they can serve as for detection of new cases and also for follow-up of patients on a gluten-free diet. We also have genetic tests that help us in determining whether a person has a predisposition to develop celiac disease. This is very important in young children or in young families when they have a patient with celiac disease in the family but they would like to know if a newborn child has a predisposition and what to do when they'll introduce gluten in their diet. The only cure is a strict lifelong gluten-free diet. Wheat, rye and barley have to be substituted by gluten-free products and celiacs also have to be careful about hidden gluten, which is present in many commercial products. This is not easy. The limit for gluten-free is 20 parts per million of gluten or 20 milligrams per kilogram, which is a mouse in comparison with Mount Everest. It is very important for patients to follow a strict gluten-free diet. Once they go on this diet, they actually are on their way to a completely normal, healthy life which doesn't differ much from a normal individual's.